Hi, this is David Davis from TrainSignal and VMWareVideos.com, and today I want to show you another one of the cool VMware Lab Swings that I've been talking about recently. This one is a vCenter XVP Manager and Converter, and now that might sound pretty techy. It really doesn't tell you what it does. I'll tell you what it does. It actually allows VMware's Virtual Center to manage Hyper-V servers. If you scroll down and read the details here a little bit, it talks about management of the following Microsoft Hyper-V platforms and really no other platforms. It doesn't manage Citrix or anything like that. Really, it just allows you to manage Hyper-V. Now, why they didn't call it vCenter Hyper-V Manager and Converter, I really don't know. But I can tell you the goal of it isn't really to manage Hyper-V servers permanently, um, although it can do some of the basics. Really, the goal is to help you to convert Hyper-V servers into VMware vSphere. But still, it does something really cool by allowing you to add these Hyper-V servers to your vSphere client and then also to convert virtual machines from those Hyper-V servers. It's completely free as long as you already have VMware vSphere, of course, because you'll need vCenter to be able to use it. So what I did was I downloaded it right here. Again, it's completely free. And then you install it on a Windows 2008 server. It could be a standalone Windows 2008 server or it could be your VMware Virtual Center server. All I did is go through a quick and simple Windows installation here on my Windows 2008 server. And then when I was done, there's actually no installed programs related to it. But what you will see is over inside services, when you're all done, you'll see this right here, VMware vCenter XVP Manager, and you can see that it started. So basically this service on this Windows 2008 server is going to be kind of your go-between between, between Virtual Center and between the Hyper-V server. So the Virtual Center server is talking to the XVP Manager, the XVP Manager is talking to the Hyper-V server. So once that's in place, then you can go to your vSphere client and then once you're in the vSphere client, you'll go up to plugins and down to manage plugins. And then right here, you'll see actually an uninstalled plugin down here or an available plugin. You'll click install to install it. And once you're done with the standard installation, you'll see that it's enabled just like mine is. So then once that's enabled right here in your home screen, you'll see third party host. You'll see this icon underneath the inventory. Now, if you go to your standard hosts and clusters, and you try to right click and add a new server, let's say a new host, you won't be able to add a Hyper-V server here. That was kind of what I expected. But instead, you have this separate screen still underneath inventory called third party host. So if I go into the third party host right here, and if I right click on my virtual center server, I can add a third party host directly. I can also import a third party virtual machine. So let's go ahead and add this new Hyper-V server. I just called it Hyper-V1. I have to type in the host name and the administrative username and password. Click Next there. It says it's found my Hyper-V host. It knows the vendor. It knows the model of the server, the version of the operating system, Windows Server 2008 R2. And I added the Hyper-V role. And in fact, I've got one virtual machine called Windows 2008 I'll say Next there and finish. And while that's being added, I should point out that XVP Manager actually stands for Cross Virtual Platform Manager. The X is the cross, so it's Cross Virtual Platform Manager. Now, it doesn't manage other virtualization platforms other than Hyper-V. And hopefully this will be something that will be added to vCenter server later. You can see up here that it is a tech preview. That's what they call it. So hopefully they'll learn from this tech preview and then they'll add this functionality to later versions of Virtual Center so that Virtual Center can manage Hyper-V servers. And again, the primary reason that VMware is doing this is to allow you to import those virtual machines and convert them really over to VMware Virtual Center. It's not something that's meant to be used permanently and it honestly doesn't offer a full functionality like configuring the Hyper-V server, which you would need if you were going to be doing it permanently through Virtual Center. So on the left-hand side here, we can see that our Hyper-V server has been added. If I click on that, you can see I have one virtual machine. It's currently powered off. Uh, if I go to the summary for the server here, you can see the manufacturer, model, number of cores, CPU, processor sockets, virtual machines, number of NICs. You can see the CPU and memory utilization, and then also the local data store on that server, 
and then it's free capacity. You can see what virtual networks have been created on that Hyper-V server. From here, I can reboot the server, shut it down. I can open the console, which is pretty cool. It's actually like RDP inside the vSphere client to the Hyper-V server. And then I can import the third-party virtual machine. If I go to the Virtual Machines tab, I can right-click on the Virtual Machine, but actually nothing happens. I can expand the Hyper-V server out over here, and I can right-click on the Virtual Machine and do some basic stuff like powered on, off, reset, shut down the guest. I can open up the console to the Virtual Machine, edit the settings, or remove the Virtual Machine. If we go into Edit the Settings of the Virtual Machine, it looks just like a vSphere Virtual Machine here that we're editing, but actually it's, of course, a Microsoft Hyper-V Virtual Machine. So it's really interesting what all you can do with this. And I can kind of see where they're going with this. And I think it would be a great feature for them to add to VMware vSphere. I can go into the configuration for the Hyper-V host and scroll through the hardware here like processors, memory, networking, and network adapters. But I really can't configure the Hyper-V server like I would be able to configure an ESX or ESXi server. I can also view a task and events related to this Hyper-V server. And then finally, I can access the console. Let me show you what that looks like. And there we go. So here inside the vSphere client, I'm connected to the console of a Hyper-V server. I can go in and I can edit the virtual machine, reconfigure the Hyper-V server, whatever I would do on this Windows 2008 server, I can do through this console. Now, of course, if this were a free Hyper-V server that didn't have a GUI interface, I couldn't run the Hyper-V manager locally, but I could run something like 5.9 Hyper-V manager, which is a pretty cool free tool you can install locally on a free Hyper-V server. That's another topic. I did a blog post on that already. Back to the XVP manager, if I were to right click on the Hyper-V server here, I could do import virtual machine, but you do actually have to install VMware Converter before you can do that. So it is possible to do, but it really counts on VMware Converter. In summary, that's the VMware vCenter XVP Manager and Converter, which is a free fling from labs.vmware.com. I'll include the link to download the XVP Manager in the blog post for this video. Thanks for watching this overview of this exciting new application from VMware. Again, this is David Davis from Train Signal Training and from VMWareVideos.com.